Washington, calling Counter Spy. Calling Counter Spy. Washington, calling Counter Spy. Washington, calling Counter Spy. Butch, 
Looks like we got to find a new handyman. Yeah, yeah, but come on, let's drag him out. We got enough with that wind blowing and that storm. I don't want to have any corpses laying around here. Yeah. Right next to me. Okay. Yeah, I got him. Yeah. He's dragging to the edge. Mr. Hardy, 
starting. Now that the rush is over somewhat, where are we flying to? The Florida Everglades, bud. We land at Miami and proceed south by car. What did you find out from those statistical reports? Well, our statistical department has reported, bud, that a number of shipments of gasoline have been made by six different companies to a certain gasoline launch supply station along the main road in the Everglades. We also found out that a certain shipment of Willis and paper was also sent to this gasoline station. You probably recall the forged coupons were printed on Willis and paper. Yes. And also ink, similar to that used on the counterfeited coupons, was also shipped to this gasoline station. Say, that's hot. Exactly what kind of a filling station is it, Mr. Hardy? Well, are you familiar with the Everglades, bud? No, no, I'm not, sir. There was one main road, which has been built up on artificial ground and piling. It runs for nearly 120 miles across the peninsula. Goes over about 40 different little islands. On a few of these are gasoline stations. This gasoline station in question is just about 100 feet off the main road. It services automobiles and also fishing boats. Yes, but how could it service any enemy submarines? People are driving over that road constantly. There must be some neighbors down there. That's the catch. That's what you and I have got to find out, but If anything wrong is going on down there, a mighty clever device is being used. What's your plan, sir? Well, in the morning, we'll land at Miami. We'll get an oil truck, fill it full of gasoline, and find out when a delivery is supposed to be made to this gasoline station. Then you and I will make the delivery. Calling J8, Palm B. 
Beach, Florida. You get contact. Harding calling J-8, Palm Beach. Coming through. Notify all counter spies on Florida East and West Coast to investigate all ocean-going tugs. Check the last five or six feet of their rope hawsers. I broke a bottle of nitric acid on iron stanchion, which bore marks of a rope hawser having been tied to it. This acid will burn hemp fibers of hawser. Notify immediately of any tug having hawser burned at end. J-8, reporting to Harding, Miami Counter Spy Field Headquarters. Tugboat, Santa Louise, out of Cape City. Has hawser showing acid burn. Good. Contact me immediately as soon as that tug leaves and returns to her home berth. Want exact times of leaving and return. J-8, counters by reporting to Harding. Proceed. Tugboat, Santa Louise, left berth 735 last night. Return 535 this morning. Average speed when not towing is 14 miles. That is all. All right, bud. This is the information we've been waiting for. Now, let's look at this chart of the west coast of Florida and do a little figuring. Yes, sir. Now, Leanna Louise's home port is 23 miles from this gasoline station in question. She cruises at 14 miles an hour. That'd take her... One hour and 45 minutes to get from her home to the gasoline station. Correct. One hour and 45 minutes for her to return from the gasoline station back to her home berth. The entire time being three hours and a half. But she was gone ten hours. That leaves six and a half hours of her time to be accounted for. That's right. Six and one half hours. Now, suppose she hooked onto a 10,000-gallon barge at the gasoline station in question and towed it out to sea to meet a submarine. It'll take two hours to unload the 10,000 gallons after she met the sub. Which leaves two and a half hours for her to tow the loaded barge out and the empty barge back. Correct again. Now, I've checked with the Navy, and a tug which makes 14 miles an hour by itself is slowed to 12 miles an hour when she's towing an empty barge. When she's towing a loaded barge of 10,000 gallons, she'd be slowed to 8 miles an hour. Her average would therefore be 10 miles an hour. Two and one half hours still accounted for. That means in two and one half hours, a tug could cover 25 miles. So she'd be meeting a sub 12 and one half miles off the southern Florida coast. <laughs> that beautiful deduction, Mr. Harding. Good reasoning, but where does it get us? What makes you think she did pick up a 10,000 gallon barge at the gasoline station in question? Where was the barge? Oh, Bud, I haven't been entirely honest with you. I kind of suspected it. Did you notice, Bud, the night when I put the nozzle of the gasoline hose into that pipe, the pipe was just flush with the dock? No, I didn't. Well, it took us 45 minutes to put that gas in. When I took the nozzle out of the pipe, the pipe was four inches lower than the level of the dock. Then the tank under the dock was a floating tank that went up and down with the tide. The dock was really a disguised oil barge with just the shell of a dock over it to camouflage it. Exactly. And before morning, the tug brings the empty barge back and it's shoved under the dock again. What's our next move? Tap out the signal through the counter spy headquarters, Washington. Have the contact relay to our field testing laboratory and get me Tex Walker. Tex is an expert chemist on gasoline and all fuel oils. The next time a submarine's refueled with that gasoline, they're going to have a surprise coming to them. Legends are. Shop our buttons. Boat is full speed ahead. I said full speed ahead. Why are they slowing the motors? The captain, I'm very sorry, sir. We're having trouble with the motors. Oh, what's the matter? One motor has stopped entirely. You started taking it apart. The whole inside is burned as if there were acid in the gasoline. That cannot be. How long will it take to repair? I'm afraid, sir, it is beyond repair. And the other motor is giving us trouble. The staff is put here. Nun, was he do? Put on up the light. Switch on the lights, you fool. Sir, we are having the same trouble with our gasoline generators. Switch the car into the battery. You must repair them. We'll be at the mercy of the Americans. Are you sure it's trouble from the gasoline? Yes, sir. The carburetor and filters in the gasoline line have all been eaten away by acid. Do my luda. Notify Herr Himmel at once. Tell him we're ruined. We've been sabotaged. Notify Herr Teachman in New York. It's his fault. Hoffnung's close a doom cup. He will suffer. Count us by headquarters, Washington. Emergency message just intercepted from disabled German submarine off Florida coast to Herr Himmler, Berlin. Submarine also trying to contact Gestapo agent in this country, but cannot as yet locate contact point. 
That means the guest operation will be sent to the Everglades to investigate trouble. Notify Florida police to proceed on observation plan 3B. State police reporting to David Harding according to issued counters by orders. Black limousine speeding down Everglades Trail at 70 miles an hour. Drivers alone in car. Out of state car. License number New York 14C319. Shall we stop this car at next police intersection? No. Let it proceed. Washington, you contact Baxter. Speak. Yes, sir. I'm in the New York License Bureau, as you requested. Your call is being relayed directly to me. This is Harding. I'm still in Miami. Check for me immediately. New York License 14C319. Yes, sir. I have the files. Just a minute. 14C319. Uh... Herbert R. Teachman, 1142 East Riverside Drive. Teachman, Teachman, that name's very familiar. I'm having our suspect filing clerk listen in to our conversation. He's probably even now checking on Teachman, and you should hear from him within the next two minutes. Excellent, Baxter. That's using your head. I'll wait right here for his report. Suspect filing clerk, if you're listening on this wavelength, come in as soon as possible. Time's an important element. This is Harding, Miami Countess by headquarters. Come in. Herbert R. Teachman, wealthy broker, German-born, has lived past six years in Berlin, returned to state August 24, 1940. Bachelor, sworn in Gestapo at Hamburg, 1937. Expert... That's enough, thanks. Signing off. Okay, bud. Now we know what we're up against. It's the big boss himself. Teachman's on his way to check his operators at that gasoline station. We've got to fly down there and quick. Back 
again at this same time on Monday evening. Tell your friends. Make it a date. Next week, the case of the murdered chemist. Brother versus brother. Death in the laboratory. The corpse that came to life. The mystery of the strange makeup. And the secret of the powdered hair. Next week, gripping counter-spies.